First time you met Mr. Putin, can you describe the circumstances? I met Mr. Putin in summer of 1998, shortly before he became head of FSB, and shortly before uh, we had a default uh, in the country. Uh, Kiryanko's government uh, set up a meeting and uh, they talked about ways of strengthening the economy. I was uh, holding extreme views back then and I uh, suggested that we use one universal cure. I suggested that we should introduce an extraordinary state in the country. And uh, once again, I was uh, talking about exactly that, and suddenly Putin said, uh, before that I never paid attention to this man, he was new and he did not uh, seem to be an interesting one. And Putin said, he objected to me, he said, an extraordinary state uh, can be implemented only in two cases uh, if uh, the uh, authorities are scary or uh, if uh, the citizens uh, have a huge level of confidence in the authorities. If we don't have either of those situations, we cannot uh, introduce an extraordinary state. Uh, this was an interesting observation, and then I noticed Putin for the first time, and I guess he noticed me too. What was he like? He was not very impressive uh, or expressive, if I could put it this way. Uh, I really lost him amongst other uh, government uh, officers in the administration. He was not a bright figure. Uh, he always tried uh, to stay in the shade, and he was silent most of the time. So when he becomes the head of the FSB, or even prime minister, are you surprised? No. In 1998, uh, FSB uh, was not so significant, and when Putin became head of FSB, I knew that uh, he had a career in KGB, and this did not uh, catch my attention. In 1999, we all uh, were quite uh, anxious waiting for Yeltsin to announce the name of his successor. We were all ready. From that time on, we had to start an attack. We had to launch a big election campaign, a political campaign. Uh, we spent three years getting ready for that moment, and Yeltsin was taking his time. This was a long pause that he took. Uh, it took a long time. I knew already that he uh, chose Putin, but he never said anything. And finally, uh, when I already had uh, airline tickets uh, to go to the south, uh, I was woken up and uh, they told me that uh, everything was ready. Uh, they were shooting the movie. Putin, Putin was appointed to the position of a prime minister, which meant that he was going to become the president. But he had to be elected to be a president, and this was our job. Were you, were you, you must have been completely shocked. Uh, I wasn't shocked. Uh, on the opposite, uh, I was uh, quite happy. I was uh, looking forward to the moment uh, when I would have a name. I knew the plot. I needed an actor. The plot was ready uh, six months before that. So you need an actor. You need somebody who can play the role. Is there anything about Putin at the time that indicated he could play the role? What did you like that you saw in him? I 
In spring of that year, we did a sociological survey on the subject of people's fears and uh, also we wanted to know how people uh, picture themselves a hero. We asked uh, respondents about movie stars, their favorite actors. This was uh, a rating of different uh, roles. Uh, we asked about actors who acted as Lenin, Stalin, uh, Peter the Great. Uh, and uh, ahead of everyone else, uh, quite unexpectedly, uh, we had uh, an actor uh, who acted as Stirlitz, uh, who uh, was a Soviet uh, intelligence officer uh, who worked uh, uh, in a high-level uh, organization, uh, SS, uh, in Germany. Uh, he was a perfect uh, German uh, officer, uh, excellently dressed, uh, very well-mannered. He was uh, a Soviet intelligence uh, officer, and uh, people liked him. Uh, we even uh, did an experiment in one magazine. Uh, they uh, did a cover, uh, President uh, Year 2000. Uh, this magazine uh, was uh, extremely popular. It uh, pictured uh, this uh, Stirlitz character wearing SS uniform. Uh, so we realized that uh, people uh, liked a young, uh, strong, powerful intelligence officer. There were two options. Uh, so one of those options turned out to be victorious. Did you, uh, did, did you talk to Yeltsin about this? Did the people who were deciding about Putin know uh, what you had done and were they in agreement? Yes, every week uh, we had several meetings in Kremlin and they were all prepared by one team. Uh, that team included head of presidential administration, uh, heads and directors of TV channels, uh, several top-ranking officials, a uh, few people, and they were highly consolidated. Uh, we had a lot of trust and confidence uh, in each other. We knew that we only had one attempt. We wouldn't have a second chance. If we lose, then we will uh, fly away into the Moscow skies. So we had to win. I have not spoken about it uh, to uh, President Yeltsin. Uh, head of presidential administration had that conversation with President Yeltsin. I didn't care. I needed someone uh, that uh, Yeltsin would point his finger at. Uh, it could be a better or worse candidate, but uh, he had to be Yeltsin's candidate. Otherwise, uh, the president would not agree uh, to play a role in that plot, uh, which ended uh, with the president's resigning. So there was agreement that Putin is the man. Yes. Uh, there was a preliminary agreement. Yeltsin was hesitating for a long time before he made a decision and uh, before he chose Putin. So Putin's qualities that made him right, in, in a nutshell, are what? Now I'm thinking that uh, what matters most of all was uh, the possibility to trust this man, uh, even in the most extreme situations. Uh, it was possible to trust uh, this man with his life. For Yeltsin, it was, 
the situation uh, when if he lost the elections, if his candidate lost, then uh, he would most probably end up in jail or uh, his whole family uh, could be eliminated. So Yeltsin had to have trust. He had to trust Putin and uh, Putin proved uh, his ability uh, to take extreme measures when he uh, took a uh, prior mayor of St. Petersburg, Mrs. Sobchak, uh, on his friend's uh, aircraft. Illegally, he took him uh, from Russia to a different country. It was a risk. Uh, from Yeltsin's uh, standpoint, it was a risk uh, for Putin. Uh, he could at least get fired for that, or he could even get arrested. He never asked for preliminary permission. Uh, Mr. Sobchak, uh, was his uh, boss and he was his friend and he did everything in his power for him. For Yeltsin this meant uh, that Putin could be trusted. How much do you think, how much do you think uh, Putin's role in the, uh, after the apartment bombings, the second war in Chechnya helped him with an image, helped him uh, uh, appear to be a strong uh, and decisive leader? It's hard to compare to anyone else. There is uh, no possibility uh, to run an experiment and do it again. Uh, certainly Putin uh, did not uh, momentarily uh, learn, uh, but he learned uh, to be a leader. He was not a leader in the beginning. He did not look like a leader. His rating was uh, three or four uh, percent in the early days, uh, immediately after the appointment by Yeltsin. Uh, Yeltsin was a toxic figure. Yeltsin's kiss uh, was a deadly one. Everyone knew that Yeltsin was about to leave. How could he help? Putin, though, uh, started uh, playing uh, the role of a young, strong man who was uh, close to Putin and he was violating regular Yeltsin's Kremlin rules. Nobody was allowed uh, to act quickly, strongly, uh, make decisions individually without uh, paying attention to the president. Yeltsin gave him a corridor and Putin moved uh, down that corridor for electors. This looked as if uh, Putin was uh, in charge of a crowd uh, that stormed Kremlin and uh, as if he took the uh, president's seat. This was a kind of revolution that electors wanted. It was a safe revolution, a revolution inside the government. In the beginning, uh, they had to ask Putin to uh, act uh, more roughly. He was a very polite man. Uh, they say uh, it was a Leningrad uh, type politeness. Uh, residents of Leningrad, uh, which today is known as St. Petersburg, always uh, consider themselves to be more eloquent, more polite uh, than residents of other cities. So he was one of those polite uh, Leningrad residents. Uh, he could not make himself uh, speak rudely, so he had to be asked uh, to act more rudely. And uh, he uh, seemed to be enjoying uh, learning various uh, techniques uh, and uh, various technologies. Uh, he enjoyed riding in tanks, aircraft, submarines. He showed that he was young and strong. And, uh, there was a lot of liking. It was all happening against the backdrop of old, uh, weak Yeltsin. Uh, that uh, backdrop is very important. Without it, Putin would not be making the same impression.
Uh, uh, image or reality? In the beginning, it was image. In the beginning, it was uh, an image. Later, he learned uh, in a political sense, uh, Putin is a good student. He uh, learned uh, to run affairs very well, and then it was image again. Image ended up winning. Even today, uh, Putin is a person uh, who is playing by memory. He is uh, showing his former self uh, of 17 years ago. The former self that was quiet and, uh, and respectful, or the former self that uh, flew those airplanes and rode those horses? No, it was this was a campaign. Uh, this was an uh, election campaign, and uh, one has to do a lot of things that uh, candidates may not even like. But uh, the decision uh, to uh, start a war in Chechnya was his decision. It was his decision to go to the end. At some point in time, he said, he told us, uh, to the people in the headquarters, uh, we had doubts. Uh, Chechnya was a very dangerous uh, thing. Uh, Chechnya uh, was a place where reputations could evaporate, where uh, people could lose their image. Everyone who dealt with Chechnya, they all lost. They did not acquire anything. Chechnya was not uh, believed to be a good place for a politician. But Putin said, you do anything you want. This is my game. I'm going to the end. I'm going to war. This was not image. This was his decision. He was angry. And he wanted to punish the separatists. And he did go to the end. Uh, and uh, it turned out then uh, that electors liked that too. We didn't know that they would, though. When, when he says the line, we're going to rub them out to the outhouse or whatever it was he said, was that a scripted line or did he just say it? It wasn't either of that. Uh, this was not written for him. Uh, and the text uh, that was written for him uh, he was supposed to say something rough. Uh, every now and then he had to use strong words so that it was clear that he was not like Yeltsin. Yeltsin would never use obtainities. Yeltsin uh, could not uh, cuss out. Uh, against Yeltsin's uh, backdrop, uh, his rudeness was a benefit. But those specific words uh, they came from him. He made it up. So in the early part of, the, of his presidency, there's, uh, let, let's take an example. Uh, uh, he is made fun of on Kukli, uh, and, and by all of our accounts, he gets angry about it. Is he, is he can you tell me about that? Putin was outraged after the bombings in Moscow. Uh, those bombings in Moscow uh, caused a lot of different reactions amongst politicians. Uh, then in September 1999, uh, the uh, main competition for Putin, uh, who were stronger than himself, were Lushkov, the mayor of Moscow, and Mr. Primakov, former prime minister. I think if they were the first to respond uh, to those bombings, uh, if they became leaders uh, strong, if they raised the flag, if they 
uh, gathered others around them, then Putin would lose. It was uh, several days that uh, played a critical role. Uh, Putin uh, did not uh, step uh, out immediately, uh, but Lushkov uh, was at a loss. Uh, he started uh, talking nonsense. He uh, rode around Moscow, uh, checked out uh, basements where they were properly locked and sealed. Uh, this was not uh, the uh, action of a leader. And main uh, competition for Putin, including Mr. Zyuganov, who was also a candidate, uh, they did not uh, find the right language. Language. Putin raised the flag and people gathered around him. He certainly took notice of that and he liked that. This was the first time in his life when he became a leader. He was not appointed. Uh, this did not come from Yeltsin. This was his initiative. Uh, he was very mad and he wanted to punish the Chechens uh, for what they did in Moscow. So, more? No. So, uh, but to go to uh, how he feels about his, once he's president, how does he feel about his image uh, then? Is he, what is he trying to cultivate when the television makes fun of him. What, uh, what, what is his uh, response? Presidential campaign of 1999 and the year 2000 uh, was happening uh, at the time when uh, we had a war in the mass media scene, uh, there was a war between TV channels that was not directly related uh, to the presidentials. Uh, this was a war between owners. Some supported Yeltsin, which means they supported Putin. Others uh, supported Lushkov and Primakov. No, Putin, of course, Putin uh, accepted uh, that uh, game easily. Uh, he did not have any strong reasons to be in love with the TV. And the uh, worst problem uh, for that uh, situation was that uh, Putin saw uh, how we played with the mass media. He saw what was happening in the newspapers, uh, TV channels, radio stations, even internet. Uh, it was one big keyboard and uh, I was feeling like I was playing. This was a natural uh, thing for me. I was coming to that for a number of years. I was putting that machine together and Putin witnessed that. And I think that uh, uh, he uh, decided forever that uh, everything can be manipulated. Uh, any kind of press, uh, any TV channel uh, is all about manipulations. It's all paid for by someone. Uh, this uh, is bad heritage uh, that he received. And when following that, TV channels liberal uh, TV channels uh, started uh, criticizing him, uh, he decided that this was also somebody's order, uh, that this was a war against him and uh, he was going to uh, take the challenge. Uh, back then, uh, we did not understand that heritage that we got uh, from the previous period uh, which we corrupted ourselves, essentially. Mm, mm. It's very interesting because, of course, uh, he also, that he understands it as somebody, as a war going on. That's very interesting because, of course, uh, he even when it comes time for the uh, uh, Rose Revolution, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Orange Revolution, he thinks it's America. He, th he believes that it's the Americans uh, uh, who get it started. Certainly. 
конечно, что там Absolutely. сидит uh, какой-то американский uh, Павловский. Uh, some American uh, Pavlovsky uh, guy uh, is sitting there and uh, he is playing his keyboards like we played our keyboards in Kremlin. We uh, had meetings every week and during the election campaign we had meetings every day and uh, we decided what TV channels uh, would uh, be asked to uh, play what news, what kind of articles would be published in different newspapers, what would be posted at different websites. Uh, this uh, was a uh, strict plan uh, that was executed uh, precisely and Putin decided uh, that this was the case everywhere. An information war. Yes, yes. Information uh, is uh, an instrument uh, in, in information war. And he keeps saying that even today. In the West, uh, he uh, said this more than once. We understand that uh, these publications uh, in your press are not incidental. And uh, he is talking about his own experience. He is talking about the way he acts, about his own technique. Uh, when you talk to him in a meeting, or especially in those days, um, what is he like? Is he a talker or a listener? Does he receive or a lead in that sense through the information war? Uh, he uh, is a lecturer. He uh, was a good listener and uh, he understands what people tell him. Because later I saw that he understood what I was saying because he uh, showed a high level of understanding, which is, uh, by the way, quite unusual for a person with a KGB background. Uh, in the 70s, I have uh, met with a lot of uh, KGB investigators uh, that uh, uh, persecuted me. I uh, spent time in jail, but I have not seen one investigator that was anything like Putin. Uh, he is very flexible inside. Uh, he uh, can, uh, like Protoss, he can change. If he has a feeling that uh, you are irritated, uh, he will change immediately. He will start uh, looking for the right way to approach you. And he does it very easily. Uh, most importantly, I was uh, 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 extremely impressed with him. I, I did not have any high expectations uh, to me. Uh, he was uh, like a mock-up, uh, like a character from Agatha Christie, uh, when uh, a director says, if I don't have an actor, then I will uh, put up a dead man uh, standing and I would shoot uh, that dead man. So I was prepared for any outcome, but he was not a dead man at all. Very quickly uh, we saw him grow and develop, and I like that. We found the common language in our understanding. Uh, that was my impression. Uh, I uh, thought that uh, uh, this was a case we uh, had a feeling that we needed to uh, put an end uh, to the period of conflicts, revolutions and counter-revolutions. I wrote that phrase uh, for him, uh, for uh, his first speech, and uh, he read this phrase, uh, we won't have any more revolutions or counter-revolutions. This was uh, the uh, Russian version of Fukuyama, the end of history. Uh, but this was an illusion, certainly this was. I uh, was uh, hugely impressed. Uh, I can tell you, uh, frankly, I was uh, more than just a Putin's fan. When he meets George W. Bush the first time, Bush says he looks in his eyes and sees, his, sees Putin's soul, there was, uh, uh, we think, Maybe there was great hope in Putin that he would have a relationship and 
America would show respect to Putin and Russia. Is that right? I wasn't there when they looked each other in the eye. I don't know uh, what happened uh, between them. I don't know. But uh, then Putin uh, was most likely sincere uh, in his uh, desire uh, for new relations with America, for friendship with America after 9-11, uh, uh, Putin sincerely admired Bush. I can tell you that uh, quite definitely. Uh, he looked at uh, Bush Jr. as I was looking up at Putin in admiration. Uh, this was a model uh, for him, the model of a president who uh, took the challenge and uh, in the world scene, he was uh, starting a big war. Putin liked that, and he was prepared to be an ally. Uh, Bush uh, did not really need allies very much, especially allies in Russia. And Putin wanted to be an ally. Uh, so uh, that caused a trauma, which uh, stayed. Uh, he was not understood by Bush. And uh, that became worse uh, after the uh, Ukraine. Uh, he was amazed that uh, Ukraine was more precious than Russia. He was prepared to do anything. He was prepared to uh, join NATO. And you are uh, intriguing with uh, the Ukraine. That's, I think, how Putin uh, looked at it. And uh, after that, he lost interest for Bush. There were some other real problems there. Uh, Bush uh, did not uh, fully control uh, uh, his um, secret services, uh, or he did not think he needed to uh, fully control that. Uh, so American intelligence uh, services have been helping uh, Chechen uh, militants, and Putin uh, certainly thought that this uh, came as Bush's order. And uh, Bush was uh, hypocritical about that. Uh, those kinds of things happen. But in the beginning, uh, Putin wanted uh, to have an alliance with the West. He wanted an alliance. The story I love about that beating, of course, is the story of Putin's cross left over from the fire and the dacha, the family fire. Uh, had you heard that story before? Uh, did you know that he planned that story and to tell Bush about it because uh, he knew Bush was an evangelical Christian? I knew that story. <clears throat> and I think this was not the first time that he told that story. I know at least two more people that he told it to before Bush. And this uh, was always um, in uh, a desire to uh, make an impression. I think that uh, story uh, was true. Uh, he did not make it up. But uh, as any uh, good popular actor, uh, Putin quickly realized uh, that it uh, impresses people. And uh, he used it. He had uh, another uh, trick. Uh, when he would uh, take a person uh, to uh, his uh, room uh, in a chapel where he had uh, icons, this uh, seemed like an act of trust and confidence. One politician asked me why uh, he did it, why uh, he did it at all. He was not uh, a religious person, and uh, he uh, was not uh, so impressed. He said, why did Putin take me to his uh, private room? Uh, why did he show me uh, that icon and that cross? This must have been a way uh, to uh, establish an emotional link uh, and uh, impress a person. And it did. It worked. It did work. It did work. 
In uh, most situations, it does. He doesn't do it very frequently. Uh, if he uh, told everyone about the cross, then people would uh, make fun of him. He sounds very good at this. Uh, in what? Uh, very good at, at what? Uh, 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 excuse uh, me, I didn't get very it. Very good at, at, at being a, the president, at being an actor, at playing the role, at performing uh, what he needed to perform in order to, uh, to do his duties. I think that uh, was true in the uh, first uh, two or three years. Uh, they were uh, very bright years. Uh, Putin uh, was working very hard and uh, uh, he uh, did a lot. He achieved a lot through his leadership. Uh, he did not have full control of the country. Uh, he did not have full control of the parliament. Uh, he did not have full control of the mass media. He acted as a leader. He convinced uh, he uh, passed uh, laws on the property uh, that Yeltsin could not pass uh, for 10 years uh, because the parliament was against it. And uh, with Putin, even the communists voted for those laws. This uh, was a period of several good years and he enjoyed it uh, immensely. Uh, he liked himself. Uh, he uh, liked himself uh, being a president. Uh, he believed that he could uh, be a great president, and I uh, think he could be a great president. But then uh, his older friends uh, started a game. Uh, people from uh, who formerly worked for KGB uh, intelligence services, people that he uh, did business with uh, in St. Petersburg, they needed, they did not need a leader, they needed a symbol, they needed uh, a back uh, to hide behind uh, where they could do anything they pleased. And uh, that uh, started uh, taking effect by the end of the first term. Uh, this became noticeable. Uh, this uh, is a very interesting figure indeed, uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Uh, he uh, does not enjoy uh, working hard. Uh, he is a lazy man by nature. Uh, he uh, likes to have a good time. Uh, but he does not love to work hard, and he had to work hard. Uh, one has to work hard in Kremlin, and uh, it uh, created uh, a situation of a mismatch. Uh, some people told him, uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich, we will do it for you. Uh, disregard that. We know this stuff, and we will do the hard work for you. And this uh, was uh, uh, bureaucracy, partially. Uh, most of those men were uh, from KGB. And uh, uh, people like his uh, old assistant, uh, Igor Sechin, that Putin uh, used to talk about uh, saying that uh, he is as convenient uh, as my old sleepers. Sechin was always there. He was always around. He was always ready uh, with uh, answers to any questions. And uh, gradually that turned uh, uh, into a point of influence. Can I ask you, <coughs> excuse me, what, uh, what uh, Putin was trying to do um, who, who was he trying to satisfy? Uh, was it uh, image or reality again 
in, uh, in, in what happened at Beslan. Uh, as I say, that's a, that's a great question. All the years that I worked uh, with uh, Putin, uh, both president terms, especially during the first term, I have always been tense. There's been this tension because we try to do away with any incidents, uh, anything unplanned, any situation uh, where uh, Putin could not cope with it. This was a threat. Uh, we took care of his rating. His rating wasn't extremely high uh, from the early days, but it got high and it stayed at the level of about 40%. Every day, and not just me, uh, I would go to bed and I would wake up uh, thinking, what should I do today uh, to keep the rating up? And the main enemy was Shamil Basayev, a Chechen man who uh, was uh, a nominal separatist, but like uh, Ben Laden, uh, he had higher level goals uh, that went beyond Chechnya. Uh, Chechnya was a tool uh, for him. He wanted uh, to uh, turn the Moscow upside down, like Ben Laden uh, did not care about Afghanistan. He used Afghanistan as an instrument. Uh, Basayev saw the end of the Soviet Union. Why? Uh, wouldn't uh, the same happen to Russian Federation. He played a game at the top level. And when it became clear that uh, Putin was the uh, key uh, symbol for the society, he was in the focal point uh, for the society that didn't want any politics. Uh, people wanted uh, Putin to uh, make all decisions for them. So uh, Putin was put uh, in the focal point uh, for uh, Basayev, and uh, Basayev started fighting against Putin's uh, image. Uh, first, it happened in uh, North Ost uh, when uh, terrorists uh, attacked a theater in Moscow, and a lot of people lost their lives. Then came Beslan. Basayev uh, set up a performance there. Every day, children died. Uh, they did not feed them. Uh, they did not give them any water. And uh, uh, the plan was that uh, Putin would either capitulate or uh, he would lose his reputation, he would lose his image. This was a serious crisis. Uh, this was a really serious crisis. It was solved in a very bad way. Uh, at that time, I didn't think so, but now I believe that this was uh, a storm. They stormed uh, the school using Russian forces. Uh, Russian forces uh, shot the first round. And this was a blow against Putin, after which he became a, a significantly more authoritarian. He became uh, more focused on his uh, personality. Uh, he uh, canceled out uh, governor's elections after Beslan and did other things. Uh, year 2004 uh, was a year of transition. Uh, Ukraine and Beslan, there was a connection. Uh, in the Ukraine, uh, Putin was extremely popular. He was more popular uh, in the Ukraine than in Russia. Uh, if he ran uh, for presidency in the Ukraine, he would be elected immediately uh, by a huge majority. But the Ukrainians did not want to go to war. Uh, Chechnya uh, was a trauma for them, 
when they saw this land, uh, they uh, stopped thinking so highly of Putin. So there's a connection. And uh, following that, uh, Putin started looking for a, a different uh, attitude and position towards the West. Uh, the last warning uh, that he uh, gave uh, to the West was uh, Medvedev. Uh, when he left after the second term, uh, he uh, proposed a liberal president. But this is a different story. So after Beslan, he uh, do his uh, numbers go up among Russians? Do they do they support him more because they feel the need for safety? Uh, uh, part one and part two, uh, when he when he does away with the governors, um, what is that a sign of? What is he what is he saying? Uh, uh, about the way he's going to run the country. Rating Putin of Dni Beswana. In the days of Beslan, uh, Putin's rating became unstable. We saw some fluctuations after strong actions. It went up again. Uh, we saw uh, that people became uh, addicted. Uh, they were uh, pathologically addicted uh, to put in any case of crisis. Uh, people would look up at him. Uh, he had to help get out of a bad situation. And besides was wrong, his blows against Putin uh, increased support uh, for the president. As of to uh, the uh, system of power, after Beslan, uh, Kremlin had full power. The government uh, did not matter that much any longer. This Kremlin, uh, the power uh, these days uh, is always in singular. It's not authorities, it's the authority. There's one, there's only one. It doesn't matter uh, where it is. Uh, it is with the president. It comes uh, from the president. It flows out of the president. Uh, so uh, doing away with the election of governors uh, did not uh, cause any shocks. It was not uh, even irritating. Well, Putin started appointing them. That idea that uh, uh, Putin could solve any problem uh, is the main myth that we have in our system today when uh, Putin is not uh, coming up with any solutions. It's always other people. Uh, the myth uh, is still the same. It's the Putin's myth and uh, it's uh, popular not only in Russia. There's a, a secret plan uh, put in secret plans, secret desires. Uh, it's complete lies, nonsense, but it does work. This myth works, otherwise uh, people wouldn't believe in this. So when, when I look at the Munich speech, knowing what you've just said to me, who is that Putin speaking like that and what is he saying to the world? Uh, the audience in Munich uh, was uh, actually twofold. There were two parties, although it was not announced. Uh, one uh, Western uh, European uh, part uh, was uh, surprised. How dare he talk like that about America? In uh, reality, uh, the majority of the people there, uh, those who were silent, uh, were pleased. Uh, they liked the fact that uh, he gave this blow uh, on Americans' nose. 
and uh, they uh, came to Putin and say, and they said, "Good job. We've been waiting for somebody to uh, say this." So there was no a single uh, position, no single attitude. This was strange that Russia, with its weak economy, uh, and uh, at that time uh, it was uh, quite pro-American, pro-American Russia. Uh, spoke uh, to America like that. But this was a way uh, to win leadership. One has to uh, do uh, one thing. In politics, either uh, one shows his strength, but then one has to have strength, or one has to break another man's strength, which is easier. It does not require this much, uh, this much strength. Uh, it has to be a demonstration. Uh, it has to be uh, a demonstration, an insult uh, of something uh, that uh, nobody dared to touch. Uh, and Putin did it, and uh, it worked. Did you, uh, were you involved before he went? Were there conversations about how he should be and whether he should do it? Uh, was he leading the idea of doing it, or were people around him telling him to do it? At that time, I uh, was uh, a believer in uh, uh, holding back the United States. I thought that uh, the United States uh, needed uh, to uh, be uh, constrained, and uh, his willingness uh, to go to war anywhere was dangerous. And uh, we needed uh, to uh, do uh, something to keep them uh, at a distance. We needed deterrence. Uh, I did not uh, have anything to do with that speech personally, uh, but I uh, was uh, telling Putin all the time that we uh, are deterring the United States. Are we deterring them or not? Is this containment or not? And uh, he was not willing uh, uh, to uh, support that. He said that there is a certain element uh, of deterrence in that. He did not want to go very far. But when he came back uh, from the last meeting with uh, President Bush, this may not have been the last meeting. Uh, this was the meeting when uh, Bush had to uh, go to uh, a NATO session. And uh, in Moscow, they expected that uh, NATO could accept uh, Georgia and Ukraine. Then Putin said, if uh, Ukraine uh, is to uh, join NATO, it will join NATO without the Crimea. And when he came back from a meeting uh, with Bush, uh, Putin uh, started uh, developing a uh, plan uh, for taking Crimea. It's not that he did it personally, but uh, the uh, chief of staff was given this uh, task and they developed a plan uh, and that plan uh, stayed uh, in uh, the uh, safe box uh, for seven years. Is he feeling strong and in charge after Munich? Uh. Uh, he was hesitating. Year 2007 uh, was a difficult year for him. Uh, he had to make a decision. Uh, his uh, uh, presidency was coming to an end. Uh, he had to decide uh, whether he would leave or not. I was against that. Uh, at that time, I was uh, uh, thinking uh, that it would be better uh, to uh, go against the Constitution, find some legal excuse, uh, and have him stay. I thought that it was unth unthinkable uh, to uh, keep going without him. And uh, he has been hesitating for a long time. Uh, he's been hesitant uh, for almost a full year, until the end of the year. 
uh, at first he thought that he would uh, uh, appoint Sergei Ivanov uh, to uh, the uh, president's position. Then he came back uh, to the idea of uh, appointing Mr. Medvedev, and he was not very confident uh, with regard to America. Uh, we have not uh, faced financial crisis yet. America was very strong. And uh, for an American, this may uh, sound funny, but in Kremlin, uh, one could hear people say, uh, he's not going to go anywhere. Do you think Bush is going to leave after the second term? No, he's not. He will never leave. Uh, this was uh, especially so uh, between 2004-2005, then a New Orleans uh, story that uh, uh, was bad for uh, Bush, but uh, it was before the financial crisis still, and America seemed uh, to uh, be uh, extremely powerful. So Putin was waiting uh, whether he would be punished for this or not. What did he think of, uh, did he ever, did you ever hear him talk about or did you know what others said about what he thought of Obama and Hillary Clinton coming in? Ну тогда ведь была очень долго в Кремле была полная уверенность. At that time, people in Kremlin were uh, sure that uh, Obama would lose. Uh, Inigro could not uh, become an American president. A black American president, this was impossible. Избиратель может voters. Uh, could applaud to him, but uh, when voters uh, would uh, uh, go to the polls, they would vote against. This was the main uh, idea in the Kremlin. I wasn't following American elections, but we have been uh, waiting uh, for McCain's. I think it was McCain that uh, ran against Obama, and this was already a dangerous period. Uh, this was a period after the uh, Georgian War, and uh, we were saved by the financial crisis. Uh, Lehman Brothers collapsed uh, right on time uh, for Moscow, uh, but uh, Kremlin hackers did not have to do with that. Not yet. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, the, uh, Bush or Obama and Clinton, Hillary Clinton, they 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 love the idea of Medvedev. They talk about the reset, uh, what they call the reset. How did Putin feel about uh, about that? Just a second. Putin uh, Putin made the first move. He proposed uh, Medvedev as a candidate. Uh, this uh, proposition was a proposition made to the West. This was a proposition of detente. Uh, reset uh, was not a good word. Uh, Putin was uh, proposing detente, and he proposed uh, to uh, make agreements. It was a difficult choice for him to leave president's office. I didn't want it, uh, and I admired uh, him doing that. Uh, he deceived me completely at that exact moment, because at that specific moment, I. Uh, completely believed uh, that uh, he was uh, a Republican man, a man of constitution. And reset uh, from our standpoint was a response uh, to uh, election of 
President Medvedev, uh, but he was quite empty. There was uh, no serious, uh, there were no serious proposals uh, after that. Obama uh, was not very keen uh, on uh, doing something with Russia. He was not very interested in Russia. This was just some symbolic activity, uh, which was understood immediately. Uh, Medvedev uh, spoke. Uh, which was a, a coordinated uh, decision, uh, coordinated with Putin. He uh, spoke about uh, building a Eurasian uh, space, a single space, which uh, essentially meant that uh, Russia uh, could join NATO, which also uh, was an idea uh, launched by Putin. But he didn't even get a response uh, to that. After that, uh, Putin no longer uh, paid attention to Western proposals. He wasn't interested. Uh, Obama, the, the uh, first uh, term uh, of President Medvedev and uh, first uh, presidential term of President Obama were lost years for Russian-American relations. Uh, when, uh, when the switch happens back, uh, it's right as the uh, Arab Spring has been happening. Uh, there has been uh, uprisings, as we know, in Egypt, in Tunisia, uh, Syria, uh, Libya. Uh, and uh, President Putin takes over, and there are crowds, uh, protests beginning. For, uh, first, I, I guess, about the election, the Duma election, and second, about uh, whatever they're about, about his, the switch with Medvedev. Um, what did Putin expect, and how surprised was he by the demonstrations? No, 2011 was uh, an important year. I uh, only saw the beginning of this year uh, from uh, Kremlin. I left uh, in April. I stopped working for the presidential administration because of my uh, attitude. I thought that it was uh, quite impossible for uh, Putin to return. Uh, to uh, the office again. If he made a move, he cannot uh, take it back. Uh, it's not done. Uh, that uh, turns presidency uh, into a caricature of itself. I had to leave. And I was uh, watching uh, the rest of it uh, from the outside. I think uh, Putin uh, broke Medvedev when he uh, made him uh, do this switch. I'm sure that this was a, a psychological act of violence. Uh, it's even uh, known when it happened, end of summer, they uh, went uh, to a fishing trip and uh, Medvedev came back from that trip uh, being uh, depressed, reserved, and he, uh, he uh, uh, started showing this weakness. He would uh, fall asleep. Uh, he would uh, fall asleep sitting in the front row. Uh, this uh, uh, was a uh, neurotic condition. Uh, he was not, uh, he shouldn't have uh, done this deal. I think it was uh, not only Putin, it was uh, the whole team uh, around Putin that applied this pressure. They were uh, playing the same game. And uh, this was uh, the same team that they shared uh, with uh, Medvedev. Medvedev did not have uh, his own team. That was his biggest problem. He was a man without a team. And uh, this switch 
uh, when uh, Medvedev said that uh, the next president would be Mr. Putin again, uh, it created quite an outrage uh, in the country. Uh, his uh, ratings collapsed. Uh, the, the, the authorities' ratings collapsed. And Medvedev uh, thought, uh, for some reason, that uh, people would be happy uh, if he stayed uh, as a prime minister. After what he did, though, nobody wanted to look in his direction. And uh, in the uh, parliamentary elections, uh, people started uh, uh, to protest. Uh, it uh, happened mostly in capital cities, in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. Russia uh, stayed still so so back who, then so who is in 2012 the new president of russia uh mr putin H how is he different than he was uh, when he first started back in 1999 in what way is that man different than the first man Putin of 2012 was uh, a collective figure. This was not only one Putin. His return was uh, like a collective investment. Uh, made by the people who surrounded him uh, for different reasons they needed him in the president's seat putin after he returned was uh, no longer just an individual he was the name of a team of a group of people and one has to understand this uh, he even started acting differently uh, what uh, shocked all of us was that when he returned he uh, started uh, looking for enemies in the country he was uh, looking for a split amongst uh, different groups. This was strange. Uh, when uh, Putin ran in the elections, uh, the uh, problem was over. Nobody wanted Medvedev anymore, and uh, certainly no other candidates uh, that uh, also ran. Uh, people who wanted uh, to uh, point a finger uh, at uh, Putin voted for Prokhorov, but there were he had no enemies. Uh, there was uh, no one who could uh, act in a consolidated way. After the elections, he could bring everyone together. He didn't do that. He did exactly the opposite. He started creating conflicts. Uh, this uh, case of uh, Pussy Riot uh, a conflict that had to do uh, with uh, the uh, prohibition uh, to adopt Russian children by American citizens uh, after Magnitsky's act. And every time he demanded uh, that the parliament uh, takes decisions by a unanimous vote. Uh, this was a different Putin then. This was a Putin without uh, self-confidence, a Putin who suffered from trauma. Uh, for a long time, he thought that there was uh, a conspiracy by Medvedev, and he was uh, looking for proof uh, of that conspiracy. Medvedev uh, made him within that deal. Uh, he made him uh, appoint him to the position of a prime minister, but Putin kept looking uh, for a conspiracy, and he thought that uh, those demonstrations were organized by Medvedev. He truly believed that. This went on for three years. Uh, at that time, uh, Putin uh, ignored Medvedev uh, and uh, uh, he uh, hurt him, he insulted him uh, in a number of ways, but then he uh, didn't find anything and he realized that there was no conspiracy and uh, he gave his forgiveness uh, and now he uh, 
has he feels good about him again. Uh, this uh, behavior is not uh, what is typical of the earlier Putin. I think he uh, is having uh, problems uh, with uh, the uh, power. He feels uh, that uh, he uh, uh, has a uh, He's between uh, the uh, near circle of uh, his supporters and the population of the country. Uh, the economy was uh, suffering, it was uh, declining. We uh, have had a recession after uh, 2013. Uh, people's incomes were no longer growing. Uh, Medvedev was the prime minister, uh, but politically he is no one. Uh, Putin uh, started looking for his new place and it turns out that uh, uh, he uh, has to be a Tsar but he doesn't want to be a Tsar and he uh, starts teaching uh, the country he acts uh, as a professor as a lecturer he keeps explaining to us uh, what Russian history was like, what values uh, we have, what we should believe in. And this is so much unlike uh, Putin of 17 years ago that uh, sometimes I get the impression that it's a different man, but it's the same man. Uh, today he feels that uh, at the same time uh, he is uh, a loner, uh, he stands above uh, everyone else in the country. He is a single man uh, who knows uh, what the country needs. And uh, at the same time, uh, he is not capable of getting there. Uh, he uh, feels uh, powerless. He cannot make this machinery work because he did not uh, build a good uh, system of management, uh, and a good system of control, and the friends uh, around him are not managers. Uh, this is a joint stock company uh, that uh, uses the Russian budget. You, uh, you talked about how he believed Medvedev was uh, responsible uh, for, the, uh, for the protests. He also, I think, blamed Hillary Clinton and America for agitating, uh, agitating, yes? Yes. Uh, Putin thought uh, that uh, there was uh, an international conspiracy, uh, not just inside Russia. He thought that Medvedev was uh, somehow connected uh, to Americans. I don't know how he uh, pictured that, but uh, they uh, give him uh, various files uh, from FSB, uh, from uh, the intelligence service, uh, with all kinds of fiction stuff. How can he verify those uh, pieces of information? I think it's very difficult. Uh, to uh, test those things. The press is excluded from the political process. Nothing uh, becomes public. And uh, most importantly, uh, Putin does not believe anything that they write in the press. So he has to believe in what they put on the table in front of him. Uh, so there's a maximum level of censorship. Uh, that uh, we see it takes place in Kremlin. It hits Kremlin. Uh, they uh, have uh, uh, an amazing idea of Europe and uh, uh, about uh, many things happening in the country as well. But uh, there's a thing uh, known as luck. Uh, Putin is a lucky man. He feels uh, that uh, he is a player and uh, uh, he is lucky. St he cannot, he uh, just doesn't know how to stand up from a table. Uh, he would delay this moment. Uh, you see, this uh, is uh, very typical of Putin and this is also very typical of the system uh, that has taken shape uh, at Yeltsin's time. We uh, don't have institutions uh, that uh, would act in a regular way. Uh, we don't have bureaucracy that would 
perform uh, its uh, role. Our system uh, keeps jumping. If it cannot uh, address a challenge, it walks away from it, and it walks away to a place where it can uh, simulate force. If it cannot address a problem in the Ukraine, it goes to Syria. If uh, it can uh, not uh, solve a problem in Syria, it uh, starts uh, making an impression that uh, it is uh, affecting elections in the United States and France and Germany. This uh, seems, uh, this is similar uh, to the old uh, technique uh, of Potemkin villages. However, uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, 3D Potemkin village. It's a flexible, agile Potemkin village, which mobilizes resources uh, to throw them at the right moment uh, to present a bright picture, a global picture, if possible. Putin feels that he is a global figure, not just a Russian figure. He feels that he is one of the world leaders. This is important for him. So today uh, he deals more uh, with uh, Syria and the United States and Germany, then he deals with Russia. Our TV uh, does not uh, give you much understanding of what's happening in Russia. You keep watching uh, all kinds of uh, documentaries and series uh, on the Ukraine, on the Middle East, on America, on Trump, and this thing and the other. So you once said, you could play the piano, you could play the media, you could play the whatever uh, for him. Uh, who is playing it now for him? Is he playing it himself? No, когда мы строили для Кремля, when we were uh, building uh, the system of mass media and management for the Kremlin uh, when we were uh, setting up this uh, system of information policy. Kremlin was weak. We were building uh, a stick that uh, they could rest upon. Uh, or a wheelchair that they could ride in. Uh, Yeltsin's Kremlin was weak. There was always a threat and they had to maneuver. The mass media uh, was a way to make up for this weakness. Uh, that's why I'm uh, talking about uh, a stick or a uh, wheelchair. Uh, then uh, when we won the elections, we thought that we could uh, make this a permanent system. And I uh, participated in that for a long time. Putin, by the way, uh, promised that he would not uh, touch internet. And uh, indeed, for 10 years, he has not touched internet. Uh, we had the most liberal internet regime, more liberal than in the United States, because uh, there were no uh, lawsuits uh, at all uh, with regard to what was happening on the web. Now it's no longer the case. Today, today the uh, mass media uh, is... Uh, the power, uh, same kind of power as FSB or Investigation Committee, they are not getting directives from Putin. They are not told what to say. They uh, make up uh, their plots, but they know in which direction to move. They know, they uh, have multiple meetings uh, with uh, members of presidential administration. They have weekly meetings and uh, oftentimes they meet more often with, than that. And uh, heads of TV uh, channels uh, get uh, general political instructions for the coming week, but then they make up their plots. They cannot say that uh, it's not our fault. Uh, we've been given an instruction. Uh, they uh, shoot fake uh, videos. They uh, uh, make face, fake news, uh, talk about things that uh, 
do not exist and they uh, do it like they did uh, in the naive 1990s uh, when oligarchs uh, owned uh, TV stations and uh, in the evening news uh, everything was uh, uh, endorsed and approved over a bottle of whiskey. Uh, they would uh, put up a bottle of whiskey, uh, two or three glasses, uh, they uh, drank that bottle uh, as they discussed the main news uh, for the night. Uh, at that time it was not so dangerous because this was not uh, done by the uh, highest level in the government. Uh, it was not consumed by the government. Today, uh, TV stations know who they should not talk about. They know what uh, to say about uh, various people. If you uh, look at it uh, prior to uh, all elections in the uh, West, uh, if you look uh, at our TV programs, you will see uh, who Putin wants to back. This is a flexible system. So, information war, lots of control of media, the internet happening, uh, motivation by President Putin, doesn't like Hillary Clinton, doesn't like the United States of America, doesn't like Europe, uh, feels that they're all kind of after him, uh, turns uh, also the troll factories, the cyber war elements of the military and others, the, what some people call the Gerasimov strategy of hybrid war, all of it available to the president. Does he use it on the United States in the 2016 election campaign? I think the latter is um, quite improbable. Putin would not uh, throw uh, too many resources, uh, throw too much uh, strength uh, at this uh, questionable game uh, where he does not uh, see an opportunity of w winning. He uh, has not uh, thought that American system was uh, especially vulnerable. I think it's more likely that hackers uh, kept uh, talking and uh, showing that this was not a wall, that there are no more walls in the world, there are no more borders uh, in the world. Uh, Putin did not believe in that for a long time. Uh, for uh, sure, uh, he has uh, allowed uh, something to be done. Uh, he uh, most probably thought that uh, Clinton would be the winning candidate, and he tried uh, to uh, uh, build his uh, propaganda accordingly. Uh, why not help uh, her uh, adversaries? Uh, they will be helpful, most probably, if he gives them a helping hand. It's very difficult to understand uh, what was the level of Putin's involvement uh, or blessing in that. After November, though, after uh, Trump was elected, the situation changed. Now uh, Putin understands, or he believed, uh, at least, that he was strong. I don't know uh, who believed uh, in America that uh, uh, Putin elected Trump, but Putin believed that. Putin believed that, uh, and that has become a political factor. So now, I think there would be uh, some work done and uh, there would be some money spent. Uh, what happened in France is not very impressive. It uh, tells us that uh, Moscow doesn't really understand uh, how Moscow, uh, how Europe is uh, built. Uh, I think uh, we will have another revelation uh, of lack of understanding of the uh, way Germany works, but uh, they will make efforts always. Even in Montenegro, uh, they had this uh, comic uh, attempt of a coup. Uh, 
O. Henry style. Putin is going to move in that direction, I'm sure, because he uh, trusts the uh, tips from his fate. Uh, Trump got elected. There you go. Everybody was saying that he wouldn't be elected, but he was. Everybody was saying uh, that there would be no Brexit, and it happened. So now, from his standpoint, his uh, standpoint, his mindset uh, is uh, super competent. He uh, feels that he is super knowledgeable. He has the insight. Uh, he always guessed that all this uh, glamorous picture of powerful West uh, was a Potemkin's village that this was uh, another conspiracy against himself, that this was just a play, and now it turns out to be true. It's a play. Now, if that's a play, uh, we are going to uh, put up another play. That's how he thinks.